well hello again <laughs> for the third time this is the last section of this chit chat and chacha there's a little bit of narcissism in this one where we talk about our own writing but i guess there's always some place for vanity <laughs> now go on get on with it so that we can finish the series teacher actually sat down with something that i'd written and she was like i like what you've done here i've like what you've done there and then i started realizing like oh i write like this oh okay this is what <laughs> i do and she kept like pointing out various things and i realized that the pieces that i struggled writing like which like i write half a sentence and i'm like i can't write anymore and then the next day i come and i write those are the ones that are turning out to be crowd favorites <laughs> not crowd oh, favorites but like Hmm, that's interesting. Like oddly enough, my teachers have appreciated those ones, which I write kind of with less effort. I I feel less effort. Right? Yeah, I feel like that's a common theme. I, that's something I hear like artists. I don't I don't have any actual sources, but I feel like this is the case that artists yeah. like always have this thing where their favorite creations are completely different from <laughs> what everyone else appreciates. Yeah, yeah. I don't really know where I get this from, apart from your example, obviously. But we've well, heard it a lot. The only reason I can think of as to why that is is because. the state of mind and the emotional inspiration for creating something is completely different from uh, for uh, when you're creating something versus when you're reading someone else's yeah, work yeah yeah when you're engaging with the yeah oh look how it's on full circle yeah <laughs> right but that means that that means that when anyone reads work uh, so when i read something that someone else has created hmm. that means that i'm not i'm really not getting it sort of i'm so if it's something that they really like because they've like really invested a lot emotionally into and i don't appreciate i appreciate something else that means i'm interpreting their work on a completely different plane from what they are yeah but i guess that which is kind of sad because i'll i'll that means i'll never really engage with the poetry in the way that the way the, they did yeah that the author does right yeah but then that's only if you attribute like if you say that you as a reader or as an audience or whatever have to have to have to understand where they are coming from if their intent was that that you have to understand every word that i've written right the way i've understood it and the way i've written it mm-hmm. then if you understand something else then kuch to karna hai uske bare yeah. mein uh, but i feel like art as a virtue of being so subjective is like yeah so well if so it would make sense if everybody had a different interpretation like if everybody so let's let's say i let's say i get a lot of readers on my on my blog and everybody who reads it has a different favorite yeah. then that would make sense because everybody is engaging with my everybody including me is engaging with it in a different way at a yeah. different plane and that everyone's taking something different for it but that's not what happens what happens is the artist has one thing and everyone else aligns with this, the that other other thing. one thing yeah yeah i think that's only because we can't get distance from our own like whatever we that makes sense but it must it must definitely be because when you're reading something and when you're creating something you're engaging within two completely yeah, different yeah, ways absolutely. and the reader and the reader can never engage with something in the same way that the creator does yeah absolutely i completely agree with that you have great like yaar oh yeah why thank you you genuinely i love reading i'm, I'm good at it has thank good you. i think i'm like, good at lorry writing I feel like it has good like rhythm. Good rhythm. Yeah. I think about rhythm a lot. I guess because yeah. like I mean when when in music rhythm is like one of the first things I try and like think about yeah. whenever whenever playing music or or like listen to music and I guess it sort of translates to poetry. I, the thing is like I've, actually yeah I've seen like rhythm at least like because I dance as well rhythm kind of carries oh, yeah. on to even when I'm editing. I understand mm. the beat of the cut. Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. it's it's amazing how everything just carries over like that. Mm-hmm. Even when even when like we had like sound design classes and stuff. And when mm-hmm. I'm doing sound design, I can mm. you know the That's really good. Yeah. And that's that's I get interesting. What you mean, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. How everything just crosses over. I'm trying to find that Hemingway quote and now I'm thinking that it's not by <laughs> Hemingway. Feeling my father lied. It's so simple. For all you have to do is write one true sentence, write the truest sentence that you know. I'm like, excuse me, I don't even know what truth is. What? What are you saying? Is that a Hemingway quote? Yeah, he makes it. What is that? Did say it again? Uh, where did it go? Oh my God, I lost it. <laughs> Some uh, wait, what did he say? Uh, uh-huh. all you have to do is write one true sentence, the truest sentence that you know. All you that's all you have to do. Yeah, that's all you have to do. And you'll make it. According to Hemingway, there's a there's a there's there's something in there. 
I think he's fra- I I I think I get what he's saying and I think he's phrased it badly or at least for, <laughs> phrased it badly for me. I'm glad like, that we're now sitting in like at 1 a.m. I mean my 1 a.m. discussing how right. Hemingway must have phrased something really badly. Hey, it's always 1 a.m. somewhere in the world. <laughs> But like so I think I think really good writing is something that you read and you and you realize that it's it's tr- it's true and it's really true and you never realize that it was true until you thought about it or until you read it. Yeah, actually, my, so my mom is learning Spanish right now because she's not working. She she's uh, she pro- claims to be retired, but she's <laughs> taking Spanish classes at uh, a community college. Yeah. And her her like end goal is to read Marquez uh, in in Spanish. Oh, that'll be fun. Because she, be, yeah, because she's she's a big fan of Marquez. Um, and I think that's pretty good. That's like the best. That's like the best yeah, way to. That's the that's, the, the, that's the best way to engage with an artist. <laughs> Learn his language. They're doing as you like it next semester. Oh lord! Which, so they list. I think they listed four plays, and as you like it was the only one I recognized, which is really interesting because um because like isn't that that's like one of Shakespeare's like worst plays, right? Yeah, supposed to be no. So uh, yeah, and because and I I think I actually like engage with it. Wow, how many times do you think we used engage today? The word engage. Yeah, I think we used it more than thirty times. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But it perfectly sums it up, man. Yeah, that's exactly why. Um so I think I I think 31 I engaged with it uh like when we studied it I I I I got really into it and I like I don't know it 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 was it really ingrained itself in my mind I guess so I'm yeah. I'm and I really like the theater productions I here still, so I don't, I, still, I, I really want to see that because of as you like it I still use the phrase uh tears uh flowing in piteous chase I don't remember that but that's that's pretty good yeah. tears flowing in piteous chase Yeah Do you remember which which characters I, I was about I think it was Touchstone Can't talk okay, never mind I doubt it was Touchstone now uh but that's I Touchstone I realize only now that Touchstone had like he did he didn't really interact with any of the other characters in a meaningful way. Yeah. Like he only interacts with the audience. Yeah, which is fine. That's the point of a gesture in that. I guess, but it seems like I I know it kind of seems like a waste of a character if he's not going to engage with any any other characters. But he is engaging with the audience itself. Right, but and the audience hmm. weren't the most intelligent at that point. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I kind of l- really like the the phrases that have become insults in india by conservatives like anti national and seculars and yeah. libtard like yeah <laughs> I, i i love i love those all at at yeah. on a level like people go to the trouble to use these they're absolutely meaningless but you still use them to demean other people like exactly and and that's it, that's all it takes you just need to believe that you're insulting someone and it'll kind of work it kind of works yeah Right, I think I'm gonna go and sleep. That's probably good considering it's about one thirty a.m. Yeah. I hear I hear sleep is good for you if you want to lead a healthy life. But I, I hear. I think it's I think it's overrated. I hear so too, but I I yeah, sleep is for the weak also. But <laughs> I guess I'm the weak. Right. Finally, we have come to the end. Finally. <laughs> I hope you like the three parts of this. I do like the podcast format a little better. I think I'm going to stick to this. Um yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. If you listen to the whole thing, if you didn't, thank you for listening to this part at least. Um yeah, until the next chit chat and chat chat or another video or something. Anything. Just subscribe please. <laughs>